everybody. In this lesson, we're talking about the different types of fluoroscopy, the different kinds of fluoroscopic systems, and their settings and clinical applications. It is important to understand the differences between the types of fluoroscopy and the different fluoroscopic systems so you can achieve the highest possible image quality with the lowest patient dose. Remember, all fluoroscopy uses either a continuous or pulsed X-ray beam to produce real-time, moving images of the body's internal structures. These dynamic images help physicians to make more accurate diagnoses and perform more precise procedures. Fluoroscopy can be divided into two categories, conventional and interventional. Conventional fluoroscopy is generally used for diagnostic purposes, like for a barium swallow or a barium enema. Fluoroscopy exams are used to evaluate anatomical structures for a range of possible diagnoses, such as dysphagia, blockages, cancer, or other pathologies. Because the X-ray beam is only being generated for the length of the diagnostic procedure, conventional fluoroscopy is generally associated with a lower patient dose than interventional fluoroscopy. Pediatric fluoroscopy is a subcategory of conventional fluoroscopy. Due to the size and developmental levels of pediatric patients, special considerations should be taken to reduce patient dose and to make pediatric patients more comfortable. Some fluoroscopic systems have a pediatric setting. Regardless of whether it does or not, though, healthcare workers must exercise particular care when working with children because the acceptable dose for pediatric patients is much lower than for adult patients. Ideally, if available at the facility, a child life specialist should be involved with the procedure to help reduce patient and guardian anxieties. The last kind of fluoroscopy we'll discuss is interventional fluoroscopy. Interventional fluoroscopy is generally used for procedures such as an angiogram, which is a diagnostic test that allows healthcare providers to visualize the inside of the blood vessels, particularly the arteries. There are benefits for patients undergoing interventional fluoroscopy procedures instead of surgery, which includes less pain, reduced risk, and shorter recovery time compared with traditional surgery. Interventional fluoroscopy allows for more precise procedures because it gives physicians the ability to see the placement of instruments or devices in real time. The visibility produced by interventional fluoroscopy can prevent more invasive procedures, which improves patient outcomes. However, because interventional fluoroscopy may be used for the duration of a procedure, the dose can be much higher than conventional fluoroscopy. Because of the risks posed by high radiation doses, there are a number of ways, such as pulsed fluoroscopy, spot imaging, and last image hold, that can help reduce patient dose. We will talk about all of those techniques in future lessons. Fluoroscopic systems can also be categorized by the settings in which they are used. These settings are divided into two categories fixed, and mobile. A fixed fluoroscopic system is usually found in radiology departments or imaging centers and can produce both static radiographic images and dynamic fluoroscopic images. For this reason, these rooms are called radiography fluoroscopy rooms, or RF rooms. The equipment in an RF room is fixed and does not leave the room. These systems include an X-ray tube, table, table bucky, image intensifier or flat panel detector, and an upright bucky. Mobile fluoroscopic systems are called C-arms and can be full-size or mini. C-arms are usually found in hospitals or clinics because they're smaller and less expensive than having a full RF room. Because of their mobility, C-arms are ideal for use in surgical and orthopedic procedures. C-arms generally have an X-ray tube, an image intensifier or flat panel detector, and a workstation with a monitor or two. The C-shaped arm connects the X-ray tube and image receptor and allows movement without the risk of misaligning the X-ray tube and the image receptor. We'll be discussing C-arms in greater detail in a future lesson. Let's give you an example of an operating room procedure where mobile fluoroscopy would be used. A surgical cholangiogram, also referred to as an intraoperative cholangiogram, is a study performed by a surgeon to visualize the anatomy of the bile duct system from the liver to the small intestine. It is often performed along with the cholecystectomy procedure, which is the removal of the gallbladder. A catheter is placed into the cystic duct, which helps in draining bile into the common bile duct from the gallbladder, and a water-soluble contrast media is injected. Viewing the bile ducts before removal of the gallbladder may help ensure that the surgeon does not cut or damage the common bile duct. During this procedure, the radiologic technologist will position the C-arm over the right upper quadrant of the abdomen where the biliary system is located. As the surgeon injects the contrast media, the technologist will take exposures as directed using either the exposure switch on the C-arm, remote control, or the foot pedal. 
Although sea arms allow for greater flexibility and mobility, they have a higher potential for radiation exposure to hospital staff because they do not have permanent protective fixtures. Operators need to take great care during procedures to apply the correct safety protocols to reduce occupational dose. For example, making sure to ask everyone in the room if they have lead aprons on prior to making any exposures. Fluoroscopy can be used for both diagnostic and procedural purposes, and fluoroscopic systems are found in a variety of settings. For example, fluoroscopy can be used in gastroenterology to visualize the digestive system and to aid in the placement of feeding tubes. Fluoroscopy is also useful in cardiology procedures such as angiography and in the placement of pacemakers. Fluoroscopic systems can also be used for procedures in orthopedics to guide the placement of screws, rods, and other implants. Urology, to visualize the urinary tract and guide the removal of kidney stones. And vascular surgery, to visualize the blood vessels and guide procedures like the placement of stents or embolization. All of these procedures can take place in many different settings like hospitals, clinics, ambulatory surgery centers, and private imaging centers. In summary, there are two types of fluoroscopy, conventional and interventional. Conventional fluoroscopy is primarily used for diagnostic purposes. Interventional fluoroscopy is primarily used for vascular procedures. Pediatric fluoroscopy is a subcategory of conventional fluoroscopy used for the care of children. All three types of fluoroscopy are generally associated with different levels of radiation exposure.